Good day everyone! Today we will be discussing about mean and variance of a discrete random variable. So last meeting we discussed about um, discrete probability distribution wherein you learned how to distinguish a discrete from a continuous random variable. You also learned how to construct a values of random variable or how to find a values of random variable. You also learned how to construct a discrete probability distribution and a probability mass function. Those learning will be vital for today's session because you will be applying those learning in order for you to find the mean, variance, and standard deviation of a discrete random variable. Now, for our most essential learning competencies, you will be able to illustrate, calculate, interpret, and solve mean and variance of a discrete random variable. Let's have the first problem. Peter is one of the senior high school students at Amadeo National High School. According to his teacher, he has the chance to fail five out of nine subjects. There are six core subjects denoted as C and three specialized subjects denoted as S. Find the mean, variance, and standard deviation of a discrete random variable C. So the first thing that we will be doing is to construct or find the values of random variable C. So you already know how to do this table. So we have six core subjects and three specialized subjects. Since he has the chance to fail five out of nine subjects, that's the reason why we have five, four, three, two, one, and zero, and zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Now, in order for us to decide if it is possible or not, you're going to take a look at the pair, five and zero. That is possible. Why that is possible? Because 5 doesn't exceed on 6 and at the same time 0 doesn't exceed with 3. Same thing with 4 and 1, 3, 2, 2 and 3. Those are possible. However, 1 and 4 is not possible. Why this is not possible? Because 4 exceeds with 3 specialized subjects. You only have 3 specialized subjects. That's the reason why 4 is not possible. And at the same time, 5 is also not possible because you only have three specialized subjects. So therefore, the values of random variable C, since it, we're looking for values of random variable C, we're looking on this column. And the only possible on this column are 2, 3, 4, and 5. That's the reason why C is equal to 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, the next step is you're going to find the frequency. So, in finding the frequency, you are going to use the combination. So, you're going to have 6C here since you, you have 6 core subjects. So, you're going to have 6C, 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 and 6C. Now, where did we get 5, 4, 3, 2? Since we're looking for core subjects and this represents our, our value of C, and this is not x. So we're going to rewrite 5, 4, here, 3, and 2. Now, how are we going to know the partner of this one? So you're going to go back with your table on the values of random variable C. But, so we have 5 core subjects. So if we have 5 core subjects, therefore you don't have specialized subjects. So that's the reason why you have 0. If you have four core subjects, you have one specialized. If you have three core subjects, you have two specialized. And if you have two core subjects, you have three specialized subjects. Now, you're going to use your calculator and then you're going to have 6C5 or 6 taken 5 times 3C0 is equal to 6. So you will be using your calculator and you will be arriving with 6. 45, 60, and 50. So this is just only a review of what we discussed last meeting. So in order for you to check if your answer with the frequency is correct, you're going to have 9C5. Where did we get 9? 9 is 6 plus 3 is 9. So that's the reason why. And 5, that's the number of feeling subjects of are the chance of feeling subjects of Peter. So, and that's 5. So, that's the reason why we have 9C5, which is equal to 126. So, if we're going to add this one, that's equal to 126. Now, we're going to have 
the discrete probability distribution. In order for us to find the probability again, you're going to get the frequency all over the total frequency. So we have 6 all over 126, 45 over 126, 60 over 126, and 15 over 126. So we just only rewrite the lowest term of the fraction, of the given fraction. So we have the total of this one is equal to 1. Now, for probability mass function, we just only rewrite C and P of C. And then for cumulative density function, we have 5 over 42. And then after that, you're going to um, multi or add 5 over 42 plus 20 over 42. That's equal to 25 over 42. 25 over 42 plus 15 over 42 is equal to 40 over 42. And 40 plus 2 over 42 is equal to 42 over 42, which is equal to 1. Now, if you're done with this one, the next part is our main topic, which is equal, which is the mean variance and standard deviation of a discrete random variable. So this, the first thing that you're going to do in finding the mean variance and standard deviation of a discrete random variable, you're going to construct a five-column table. So this, like this one, so you have value of C, P of C, and then the third column represents C times P of C, the fourth column represents C squared, and the fifth column represents C squared times P of C. Now, so after this, you're going to rewrite the value of C and P of C, which you can see on the probability mass function or your on your discrete probability distribution. After that, we can now proceed with C times P of C. So meaning, you're going to multiply C to P of C. So like this one. So 5 times 6 is equal to 30. So that's the reason why we have 30 over 126. Next, we have 4 times 45. And that's equal to 180 over 126. So why did you use this um, fraction, which is not simplified? I used those and this fraction because um, it will make easy for me to add the C times P of C because you will be able to have same or similar fraction. Next is 3 times 60, which is equal to 180 over 126, and 2 times 15, which is equal to 30 over 126. After multiplying C by P of C, you're going to add C times P of C, and that's equal to, since we have similar fractions, you will only add the numerator. 30 plus 180 is 210. 210 plus 180 is equal to 390. Plus 30 is equal to 420. And then copy the denominator 126. 420 divided by 126 is equal to 3.3333. So after that, you're going to proceed with C squared. In C squared, you will only get the squared of each value of C meaning you will multiply the value of C by itself. So 5. 5 times 5 is 25. 4. 4 times 4 is equal to 16. Next is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So we have 9. Next is 2 times 2 is 4. That's the reason why we have 4 here. So after that, you're going to proceed with the fifth column, which is C squared times P of C. For c squared times p of c, what are you going to multiply is the c squared column and the p of c column. Take note of that. You are not multiplying c squared by c times p of c, but you will be multiplying c squared to p of c. So meaning for this one, you will be multiplying 25 times 6 is equal to 150 over 126. So we're going to copy the denominator. 16 times 45 is 720. Then copy the denominator 126. Next is 9 times 60 is 540. And then copy the denominator 126. Then 4 times 15 is 60. Then copy the denominator 126. After that, you're going to add 
all the values or the fractions here in c squared times p of c in order for you to find the summation of c squared times p of c. So adding this one, since we have similar fractions, you will only add all the numerator 150 plus 720 plus 540 plus 60 is equal to 1470 divided by 126 and that's equal to 11.6667. So we're done with this table. After doing this table, you will be able to use or find the mean variance and standard deviation. So to find the mean, mean is what we call the expected value. So E of X is equal to E or summation of C times P of C. So based on our table, our summation of C times P of C is equal to 3.3333. So that's the summation on the third column. So that is your mean. So therefore, our mean is equal to 3.3333. Mean, the other name or symbol for mean is mu. So this is what we call mu. So this symbol is what we call mu. Next, to find the variance, you will only use the formula variance or sigma. So this symbol or this sign is equal to sigma. So sigma squared is equal to the summation of c squared times p of c minus mu squared. So based on our table, our summation of c squared times p of c is equal to 11.6667. And that is your summation on your last column. Minus your mean, which is 3.3333 squared. So the first thing that you're going to do, you're going to multiply 3.3333 by itself. And then after that, you're going to subtract this by this one. And the answer is 0 0.5558. So therefore, your variance is 0 0.5558. Now, to find the standard deviation, you will only get the square root of your variance. So your variance is 0 0.558. So instead of writing sigma squared, since your value of sigma squared is 0 0.5558, so you will copy this one. And then getting the square root of 0 0.5558, the answer is 0 0.7455. So therefore, your sigma is, or your standard deviation is 0 0.7455. Now to interpret this one, in order for us to interpret the mean, the mean of a discrete probability distribution is 3.33. It implies that in the long run, the expected number of field specialized subjects of Peter is 3.33. Okay? And then for variance and standard deviation, the variance and standard deviation of a discrete random variable is 0 0.5581 and 0 0.7455 respectively. It means that on the average, the number of field core subjects, it should be core subjects of Peter is 0 0.7455 from the mean. Okay? So you can use this as your basis for interpreting the discrete um, mean variance and standard deviation of a discrete random variable. Okay? It, so in interpreting the, um, the result, you will use the problem as your basis in interpreting the result of mean variance and standard deviation. Next is, this is the next problem. Practical research is considered to be one of the difficult subjects in senior high school. This is the reason why Mr. Prim decided to group his students into five. He needs to choose five leaders among eight volunteered students. Among the volunteered students, there are five who excelled in English, denoted as E, and three who excelled in mathematics, denoted as M. Interpret the mean, variance, and standard deviation of a discrete random variable, E. So again, you're going to start with the values of random variable. So to find the values of random variable, E, you're going to construct this table. So you have five English and three math. And as you notice, this is not possible. The last two rows are not possible because it exceeds the number of three math subjects. 
So, or three students who excelled in mathematics. So, you only have three students who excelled in mathematics, but you write four and five. That's the reason why that's not possible. So, since we're looking for E, so we're going to take a look on this column. And based on our um, last column, the only possible in this column is 5, 4, 3, and 2. So, therefore, E is equal to 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, to find the frequency, again, you will be able to use the um, combination method so that you will be able to find the frequency of each value of E. Now, to you're going to construct a discrete probability distribution. So, you will be using the frequency for value of E, which is equal to 5, you have 1. For 4, we have 15. For 3, we have 30. And for 2, we have 10. So the same thing, what are we going to do to find P of E? To find the probability of each value of E, you will be using frequency all over total. So we have 1 all over 56. That's the reason why we have 1 over 56 here. Next is 15 over 56, 30 over 56, and 10 over 56. Now, if we're going to add all the, probab all the values on P of E, that's equal to one and this should always be equal to one. Now, for probability max function, you will be able to have this one. Now, so the main topic is for finding mean variance and standard deviation. So let's have this one. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to answer this one. So we're going to have first the five columns E, value of E, P of E, E times P of E, E squared, and E squared times p of e. So let's start answering e times p of e. So we have 5 times 1, which we have 5 over 56. Next is 4 times 15, we have 60 over 56. Next is 3 times 30, we have 90 over 56. And 2 times 10, we have 20 over 56. Now, adding all the values of the column on e times p of e, we have 175 over P to 6, which is equal to 3.125. So, your summation of E times P of E is equal to 3.125. Now, for E squared, we will just only get the squared of each value of E. So, 5 times 5 is 25. 4 times 4 is 16. 3 times 3 is 9. And 2 times 2 is 4. Now, for e squared times p of e, you will only multiply the e squared column, again, this one and this one. So, let's multiply 25 times 1 is equal to 25 over 56. Next is 16 times 15 is equal to 240 over 56. Next is 9 times 30 is equal to 270 over 56. And next is 4 times 10, which is equal to 40 over 56. Now, we're going to add all the values on E squared times P of E, and that's equal to 575 over 56, which is equal to 10.2679. Okay, so our summation of E squared times P of E is equal to 10.2679. Again, how, do, how did we get 575 over 56? Since we have similar fractions on this column, so we'll just simply add 25 plus 240 plus 270 plus 40, and that's equal to 575, and then copy the denominator 56. So you need to take note of this. So you have summation of e times p of e, which is equal to 3.125, and summation of e squared times p of e, which is equal to 10.2679. Now, to find the mean, so we have the expected value, which is summation of e times p of e. So, based on our table, our summation of e times p of e is equal to 3.125. So, therefore, your mu is equal to 3.125. Now, to find the variance, we'll just simply copy the summation on R of E times P of E on our table. For variance, we will just substitute 
summation of e squared times p of e, which is equal to 10.2679, minus your mu. Your mu is 3.125, this one. So we're going to substitute 3.125 squared, and then we're going to simplify this. Again, we're going to start multiplying 3.125 by itself, because it's squared, and then you're going to subtract by 10.2679. And the answer is 0 0.5023. So therefore, your sigma squared or your variance is equal to 0 0.5023. Now, to find the standard deviation, you will substitute your variance, which is 0 0.5023, to the formula of the standard deviation. So getting the square root of 0 0.5023, that is 0 0.7087. So your standard deviation is equal to 0 0.7087. 87. So, we're done with the problem. So, we already have the mean, variance, and standard deviation. So, to interpret this one, so we'll just simply um, write that the mean of a discrete bar random variable E is equal to 3.125. Okay? So, let's now proceed with the next problem. Okay, how about this one? So, we're going to proceed with this one. So, so that you're going to focus on finding the mean variance and standard deviation of a discrete random variable. So for instance, you have this table. So we have x, 3, 2, 1, and 0, and our p of x is 0 0.125, 0 0.375, 0 0.375, and 0 0.125. Again, you're going to start multiplying x by p of x. So 3 times 0 0.125, the answer is 3.75. Next is 2 times 0 0.375, that is 0 0.75. And 1 times 0 0.375, that is 0 0.375. And 0 times 0 0.125, that is 0. Now, to find the value of x squared, you will only multiply x by itself. So 3 times 3 is 9. 2 times 2 is 4. 1 times 1 is 1. And 0 times 0 is 0. Now, to find x squared times p of x, Again, you will multiply x squared by p of x, not this one, okay? The one that you're going to multiply is x squared and p of x. So, going to have 9 times 0 0.125. The answer is 1.125. Next is 4 times 0 0.375. The answer is 1.5. Then 1 times 0 0.375, the answer is 0 0.375. And 0 times 0 0.125, the answer is 0. Now to find summation of x times p of x, we're going to add this one. So the answer is 0 0.375 plus 0 0.75 plus 0 0.375, the answer is 1.5. And then... We're going to find summation of x squared times p of x. So to find this, we're going to add the fifth column, 1.125 plus 1.5 plus 0 0.375. The answer is equal to 3. So take note of this one. So summation of x squared times p of x is equal to 3. And summation of x times p of x is equal to 1.5. So we will be substituting that or those values on our formula. So to find the mean, that's the expected value or summation of x times p of x. So it should be x times p of x. And summation of x times p of x on our table, that's equal to 1.5. So therefore, your expected value is 1.5 or your mu is equal to 1.5. Now to find the variance, you will substitute the value of summation of x squared times Summation of p of i times p of x minus the mu of, mu squared. So our summation of x squared times p of x on our table is equal to 3 minus your mu, which is equal to 1.5 squared. So again, you're going to multiply 1.5 by itself, and that's equal to 2.25. So that's equal to 3 minus 2.25. Now, 3 minus 2.25 is equal to 0 0.75. So, therefore, your variance is equal to 0 0.75.
Now, you're going to substitute 0 0.75 on the formula of the standard deviation. So, we have square root of 0 0.75, which is equal to 0 0.8660. So, therefore, our standard deviation is equal to 0 0.8660. Okay, so that's all for today's discussion. So, I hope you've learned how to find the mean, variance, and standard deviation of a discrete random variable. Thank you and happy math learning.